create a sample app in order to demonstrate the workflow. At the end of the sample, we will show the Xamarin client connected to the app hosted on the nest.yt platform. Let's uh, begin with the requirements. Let's say the owner wants an app for their customer so that they can pre-book from the menu. The customer can then avoid uh, standing in a queue during a busy lunch break, for example. The owner realizes uh, this offers many other benefits. For example, if the store manager can manage the menus, orders, stock with their own app, the store can be more efficiently managed. The second step is to clearly identify the tasks, the actors involved and the system scope. The third step will determine what kind of data the app will handle. The next step is to identify how the tasks can be arranged logically into different modules. Here we will create a module known as the cafe controller to handle user requests. The second module will be the stock allocator module. This will handle a background process that will allocate stock as customer orders are created. The next step will define the data flow and how the data is transferred between the modules of the system. The order and menu information is sent via the API. A secure connection is needed here. The orders entered via the API will be sent to the stock allocator via a queue. This process will pick orders one by one in a sequence and allocate the stock. Both secure SSL connections and queue services are supported by the nest.yt platform. Next, we look at the kind of computing resources required for the app. We have allowed for a maximum of 500 requests per second when the app is running at its peak. This is during busy periods such as uh, lunch breaks. In the real world, you would, for example, study the number of hits the website is getting during peak periods and make a determination. We have also made allowances for two computer processors to handle requests as twice as fast. The app modules will require 768 megabytes of memory and uh, some more for the system and services. Therefore, we estimate a computing instance of about 1 gigabyte RAM will be adequate. As far as storage is concerned, we estimate 25 gigabytes of disk space is adequate. In summary, our system will require at least two CPUs, have a one gigabyte of memory with a minimum of 25 gigabytes of storage. We will select a computing instance taking this specification into consideration when we deploy the app in the next step. Before commencing, we need to download the Nesta Deploy app. This app is available on the Microsoft Store as a free download. Open the app, then uh, sign up. Afterwards, uh, enter the payment information. In the list of apps, we see the Hello World app. We will now create the West Point Port Sample app. So here we enter a tag to uniquely identify the app. Give the app a name. And a password. Click proceed to move to the next step. The app can be a small one, one web page website or a complex web API with many modules. Here we select an app tier that will suit our purpose. For this app, we will select uh, the two CPU app tier. Uh, every app will get its own dedicated virtual machine with its own static IP address. Services such as database and Git server will be installed and managed by the platform on the same machine for the dedicated use of the app. And we will also need uh, MySQL or MariaDB. Uh, so let's add that and proceed to the next step. Okay, here we add modules for the app. The first module is the uh, cafe controller that will handle client requests. It will be an API handler. and it will have 256 megabytes of memory. And we will scale it to two instances. The 
The second module will be the stock allocator. It will be a Walker module. It will also have 256 megabytes of memory, but uh, it will have one instance. We will add it and proceed to the next step. Here we will invite developers to join the team. The app owner will be able to invite others to the team. The owner will also be able to assign permissions to each member. Uh, the me members then can be removed by the owner anytime or else the team member can voluntarily leave the team. So here we will invite Jane to the team. We will allow her to create, update and delete modules or nests as the platform refers to them. And then we will uh, update to Make sure the changes are saved. Um, the team updates will come into effect once the app has been deployed. An email will be generated when a new member has been added to the team. For example, Jane will receive an email such as this. Uh, she can download and uh, sign up with the email address that uh, the invitation was received. So we will do that now. So here Jane would have already signed up. Jane here, she will be presented with uh, the option to either create her own app or join the, join the existing team. She will join the team uh, as follows. Now she will see the app in a list of apps. Next, uh, we will integrate the app with Slack. Once integrated, the notification such as deployment status and our other health alerts will appear on Slack. Once Slack has been integrated, any team member can subscribe to the Slack group and get app notifications. The team could use the group to collaborate and build the app. Okay, we will uh, deploy the app. Select the location like so. A summary is presented with the services and team members that belong to the app. The .NET Framework versions uh, will be available here. Select the one the version you wish to deploy and deploy. Okay, now the app has been deployed. You may click to see the, the front page of the app without uh, opening another browser by clicking here. The site is accessible using the default domain name and a demo messages API has been installed by default. Next, uh, we will add a custom domain. There are a few things to do before adding a custom domain. In this example, we'll, we'll, we will use the custom domain wpbot.co. First, ensure the custom domain points to the IP address of the app by changing the name server A record and any CNAME aliases on the name server. The IP address can be noted down from the default domain here. After the name server changes, wait for the IP address to be propagated. This is an example of domain propagation. Next, add the domain and any aliases. A free SSL certificate is assigned by default. Uh, to change the change it to a custom certificate, click here. And uh, paste the certificate key in the chain. Now we can deploy the app again for changes to take effect. Each time any change is made to either the domain, nests or 
team members the app has to be redeployed now that the modules the members domains have been finalized the team can begin working on the app each team member can request the dev kit by clicking here the dev kit will be emailed to the team member. The next demo will be about how to develop the server using the dev kit. Next we will develop uh, the app API with the dev kit that was emailed. When we say app here we mean the West Point restaurant application as a whole. The app further includes manager and customer client apps that consume the API to manage tasks related to the restaurant. The server will manage a database uh, with these tables. The tables are the final implementation of the entities and the relationships that were identified during the design process. Before working on this sample, visit the Nesta develop wiki and ensure the required tools are installed. Then follow the steps in uh, getting started to set up the environment. Now let's save the dev kit uh, to a local drive. Open a bash or a git bash shell on Windows. Ensure Docker git and ssh services are running the dotnet framework version used for the app must be installed here too now switch to the folder where we have the dev kit saved and start uh, Visual Studio Code. Make sure the folder contains the dev kit and make sure the C Sharp extension is installed. The Nestor Develop extension has been installed and optionally the Git Flow extension has been installed. The Git Flow is optional we will use it in this demo since it makes uh, Git versioning much easier. Now run the scaffold command to create the app development environment. Okay, now the uh, scaffolding is complete. Observe the command has created uh, the modules of the app with the code. A separate Visual Studio code project is created for each module. Also observe the Docker containers that has been built. The content pull command clears the local folder first. Secondly, the git master is pulled followed by the working copy of the app. When the content is pushed, the Git repository is kept independent of the deployment. In most other systems, a Git push is required to publish the code. Here, the working copy does not necessarily have to be in sync with the Git repository. The advantage is you don't have to check in the code to have the latest version running on site. You may continue to tidy up the code while quick fixes have been pushed to production. Furthermore, you may push content that does not necessarily make sense to be included in version control such as binary files and maintain it outside of it. The mechanism will become clear as we go along and start debugging to ensure everything is in place for development. We can see the message flow by tracing the path of the message creation. First we will enter a new message from the Swagger UI here. We will intercept the new 
create action in the cafe controller module. The cafe controller will pass a message to the stock allocator via the queue system. We will see how the message arrives to the stock allocator via the queue. Okay, so we will begin by setting the breakpoints. So we'll put a breakpoint here. In order to debug the stock allocator, we have to open another project. So move to the folder where the stock allocator project is located. Start another Visual Studio Code session and uh, then set a breakpoint in the stock allocator. Breakpoint here. So we will post a new create message from the Swagger UI. Open the post message and uh, copy the example value here. Remove the ID as a new ID is allocated by the database and then remove the status to as it will be set by the modules, the cafe controller and the stock allocator. The only value we have to set is a text. So we'll set and send the create request. The request first arrives at the cafe controller. So let's step through the execution. It saves a message to the database and passes a message on to the stock allocator via the queue. Now in the stock allocator, it has received message via the queue. It changes the status and carries on. Let's get, let's get all the messages, see what changes have been made. So as you can see, there's one message there, the one we sent. The status has changed. Initially, it was received by the cafe controller at, at that time and processed by the allocator at that time. Okay, let's begin making changes to support the West Point pod app. Now that we have idea, some idea of the process flow, let's clear the existing tables from the database first. The username will be the app tag and the password will be the one that was entered when creating the app. The app database is this one. It'll be the, it'll have the same name as the app tag. The default uh, app just has just one table. So drop this table. Okay. The local as well as the uh, remote production database has to be cleared. So the production site can be accessed uh, via SSH. On the command line, open an interactive terminal to one of the handler or worker containers. Now SSH to production. This is the production site. So you can see the files here. Let's open bash to make things easy. Now connect to the database. Instructions how to connect to the database is here. So you can connect via this command. Select the app database and show its tables. That's it. The other two commands that's going to help uh, with databases is uh, the nest data up and nest data down commands. The down command will export the production database and import it into the local database on the desktop. And the nest data up will do the other way around. Next, we will initialize git flow for the project. So we are prefixing each branch with the project tag. So now we will start a new release 
with git flow it'll be the version 010 git flow will create a new branch and once the work is finished it will merge this branch with the master or the production branch ensure to do the same with the shared folder as well as the stock controller project folder after git flow is initialized in all three folders the branches will look like as follow we will now implement the model classes followed by the controller and the views. The model classes will be saved in the shared area for the use by both the cafe controller and the stock allocator modules. Open the parent folder of both the projects uh, to make changes to the shared folder. Remove the existing classes first. Now add the uh, user model. Next we'll add uh, the menu, orders and stock. We'll need a database context class. And a class to initialize the database. The db initialize class migrates the tables to the app database and seeds it with the preliminary data. For example here it uh, creates the tables and uh, seeds the menu table if the with the initial records if it hasn't already been seeded the uh, tables are represented by model classes for example we'll use a class and uh, each property maps to a field in the database the cafe context class is a helper class to maintain the context while connected to the database and uh, help with queries the system supports structured logging. The logging data are periodically indexed into a table that can be queried via SQL. To enable nest logging, add the provider at the main entry function like this. The logs can be queried on the field shown. So you can query for example by the time logged nest and the cushion and the debug level and so on. Uh, there are other logging tables as well such as uh, CPU load, disk space, network and uh, RAM. Okay, now we will work on the controller classes. The controller classes implement the API. The methods each controller shall implement are as follows. To begin, ensure that we are using the cafe controller module. Now let's uh, begin by removing the existing controller classes. Then uh, start with the user controller. It's a standard controller with some additions to support the Nestor services. If the Xamarin client uses the Nestor library to consume this API, then the return result must have a standard JSON structure. In that case, ensure the return JSON uses the cloud result to structure the JSON in a way that is understood by the client. Secondly, the platform has built-in support for queues. The queue can be used for sending messages between the modules. Here is an example um, when the cafe controller module receives an order item containing the menu items we will send a message to the stock allocator to allocate stock for the order. This will help the cafe manager to order the correct amount of supplies for the menu on the day. This will enable the manager to serve fresh food, reduce waste and help with cash flow. Uh, first select the queue mode. The sending party will open the queue in server mode. Then uh, set the queue send type to indicate the type of object sent over the wire. In this case we will send the send type to order item as we will see later. The create order method creates a order and create order item 
adds item to the to each order as as soon as the order item is saved we will send a message to the stock allocate to allocate the items ordered the nest tag is used as a send address in this case it's a stock allocator now open the stock allocator project and uh, look at how the receiver has been implemented here the queue is open in client mode when the runtime picks up a message from a queue here the message parser uses the send queue type and passes the object accordingly the stock allocator looks at the number of menu items ordered and the number of serves allocate stocks accordingly we have added the uh, orders and menu controllers it's pretty much uh, similar to the user controller open the startup cs and add the db create and db seeding functions that will create and populate the initial database on startup and then finally give the api a name so that the title changes in the swagger ui once it's all done we can restore and and then build both modules okay now let's start debugging make sure both the modules are being started now the first one would have created the tables let's go and check the tables have been created Yes, the tables have been created on the first run. Now let's go and create a menu item. First, uh, we want to check whether the menus have been seeded. So get all the menus. Menus are there, the breakfast menu and the lunch menu. Now let's create a menu item. Remove the ID because uh, the, a new ID will be assigned by the database. Give it the menu ID 2 for the lunch menu. Let's uh, make it a Caesar salad and food type 2 for salad try it out so the menu item was created let's uh, confirm that by by getting all the menu items lunch menu id is two get the menu item is there okay once uh, everything is confirmed working push the code to production and uh, complete the release with git flow okay so the deployment has gone through now commit the work and uh, git flow release finish and make sure to do the same with the shared folder as well as the, the stock controller module and finally we demonstrate how the api can be used by a client app the nest platform offers a lot of options with its api we will explore different ways the API can be used. The first app is the manager app. Uh, we have provided a prototype of what we think will be useful to the manager based off the requirements identified. And uh, this is a prototype of the client app. And here we begin the actual development of the client apps. The restaurant manager wants to manage stock efficiently so that she can reduce waste and costs. In this demo, we will design and build an app for the manager that can do exactly that, allowing her to pre-allocate stock for the next menu. Then the regular customer would want to buy his lunch without spending a long time in a queue. For this, we will also design and build a customer app that will allow him to avoid the queue by pre-ordering. Uh, there are of course a lot of tools out there that we can use to build these client apps. However, not all tools are the same. We will use Xamarin or Xamarin with uh, our Nesta library that we can uh, save a lot of time, energy and costs. So why Xamarin? App build with Xamarin will run on iOS, Android and Universal Windows platforms. The uh, added advantage is uh, universal Windows support many other devices such as Xbox. So the same app will run across all devices with minimal changes. The second advantage is uh, Samarin build process produces a native binary. Uh, unlike other platforms that is mostly script running on an underlying script host, this is uh, completely a compiled 
binary. Thirdly, Xamarin is of course a Microsoft product with a large community of users. Microsoft also produces a free Visual Studio Code IDE to build and test the app on all platforms. The Nest library is a net standard library that can be used to build client apps. It comes with functions to authenticate and query the API saving the developer a lot of time and hassle. The net standard has converged on a single standard bringing millions of API and lines of code that can be reused cross-platform. The client and server can be developed to one language and standard increasing the ability to share code and save time. Uh, the required skill set to develop the entire app can be narrowed down to just the .NET framework. The same developer can then build both client and server code. Okay, now let's uh, begin creating the manager client. Select the cross-platform project. Move to the next step. The manager app will be a master detail app. Select the .NET standard code sharing strategy. Click OK. The Nest library is a NuGet package that can be installed. Uh, this is the easiest way to use a package. In fact, when we put this sample up on GitHub, it will uh, use a NuGet package. So you could install it this way. Although for this demo, we will show the alternate way to use the library. This is to download the source code from uh, GitHub and uh, use the cloned version. We will need the Nesta library from GitHub. So clone it uh, onto the desktop somewhere. Also clone the Nesta model project and also make sure it's in the same folder as the Nesta library. After cloning uh, it to the local machine, let's add it to the solution. So the Nesta library and the model can be seen here. Next, uh, open manage packages for the solution and uh, the Xamarin forms NuGet package version for the Nest library is 2.4.0.74863 but the one that was installed is a much later version so we will try to match this one across all the other projects. After updating the Xamarin forms, all projects will have the same version. We will need a Xamarin forms package that can draw app performance graphs. We will select the Syncfusion SF chart for the task. Although read the uh, license requirements before using it. Now let's add the Nesta library as a reference to all the projects. After adding the references, it'll look like this. We will do all uh, development and testing on uh, UWP platform and integrate other platform at the end. Let's uh, build and run the UWP project and confirm it works. Next, we need to implement the iNesta control interface. This interface is used by the Nesta library for various tasks. The implementation detail is uh, available on GitHub. Next, we will create a shared library for client apps. Anything that is common to both the manager and customer client apps will be kept in this library. We will call it uh, WP Pod Shared and make it a .NET standard library as well. The database classes will be common to both clients, so we will store these client classes here. Okay, next we will add the uh, customer client. It'll be a cross-platform app, uh, same as the manager client. The, the template is different. We will select the, the blank template instead of the master detail. The code sharing methodology, same as the manager client. The, the setup is nearly identical to the manager client so we won't cover everything again just uh, refer to the github and see how it's all been uh, done okay now both client projects have been created let's jump back to the manager client and see how we can use it to monitor the functioning of the app 
the first page here shows the status of the app. It will help the manager to determine if the app, app is running as expected. The top section here contain application logs. When the application is in production, the manager or a technical person can monitor the general health of the app by referring to information here. When debugging and testing, the app logs can be written here with certain diagnostic information. The area below is uh, the disk space and the CPU utilization. So this will sort of give an indication if the app is very, really busy and if there is causing any problems. Uh, this is only a sample set here. There are many other metrics that can be used. The platform sends health alerts to mobile devices via the Slack app. This provides uh, an additional functions to keep an eye on the health of the application. The app also exposes the net data diagnostics. To view the current status, visit the following URL. Um, the login is the app tag for the username and the password that was set for the application. So it monitors more than uh, 60 different uh, metrics and it's all done very efficiently. It doesn't use as much uh, CPU or, me or memory. All these metrics can be queried via the Nestor API. Refer to the wiki for more information. In addition, up to seven days worth of uh, app logs combined with CPU, network, disk space and RAM in metrics are available to be queried with SQL. So you may, for example, cross-reference event log critical errors with other important metrics to diagnose problems. Next, we can have a look at the order process. The first step, the manager creates the menu items. In the second step, the customer comes along and creates an order using the menu. We will switch to the customer facing client app to do this. In the third and final step, we will switch back to the manager app and view how the stock has been allocated by the stock allocator. So we will begin uh, by adding uh, menu items. Select the cafe menu and select the breakfast menu. Add an item. Let's uh, add a coffee to the item. Let's say dollars hot beverage and save so that's the first item so similarly we have added more items to both the breakfast and the lunch menus okay here we will demonstrate how someone can order items from the menu using the customer client uh, so log in with the email here now order some food from the breakfast menu Next, submit. This will uh, create the order and the stock allocator will allocate stock for the item submitted. We can see the allocated stock in the customer client later. And finally, we will see how the custom entered order is seen by the manager. So select the orders menu. That's the order and the two line items. Next, we will see how the stock has been allocated. So the background process has uh, allocated this, this stock to prepare the menu. We left building the iOS and Android version till the last moment. There has been no UI or any other kind of tweaking for the app to work in either platform. We'll begin with the Android manager client. This is the uh, iOS version running on a Mac Visual Studio. This is the, the status page. The food menu. The order page. And the stocks page. 